what is synchronicity these days we are getting almost everything is smart tvs smart phones smart watches you can connect your smart phone to the smart tv you can sync it when something happens or you do on the smart phone and the tv smart tv is on it begins to play there is no visible connection between the smart tv and smart phone but both of them are operating on one wavelength and through the smartphone you can activate your smart tv and similar things are in watch this is known as synchronicity when two instruments are operating on one wavelength they can sync together that is the term is used in modern day technology but in spirituality how does it happen it happens when the inner instrument of the master vibrates something begins to happen to the disciple all these talks are not mere talks these have been devised in such a way the arrangement of words the gaps between the words the modulation all these creates an ambience if you are listening just as you are listening to the breeze blowing you do not try to find any meaning in it you do not try to find meaning in the waves that are roaring when you are standing on a seashore then something begins to vibrate within this is known as synchronicity it happens when the inner instrument of the master vibrates something begins to happen in the disciple each one of these strokes is energy field created through the arrangement of the words the choice of words as well it is like a musical symphony or arrangement this i will explain through music in indian classic music this is an established fact if you play a well tuned stringed instrument sitar or anything else in the corner of an empty room and on the other side of the room just facing this musical instrument let an established musician play his musical instrument the same instrument you will be surprised that the strings of the other instrument in the corner will begin to vibrate the same tune you take a sitar the stringed instrument you tune it and put it in one corner and in the other corner and let it be an empty room the empty space and when in the other corner a master musician plays his sitar string instrument the one that is standing kept in the room begins to vibrate the same tune this is synchronicity when the master musician plays his instruments the vibes begin to move in the emptiness of the room emptiness of the room creates a space it is like throwing a stone in the silent lake as the stone is thrown in the tranquil waters of the lake waves arise 
and cover the entire surface of the leaf and they begin to far reach to the other shore. So too the vibes created by the musical instrument begins to vibrate the strings of the instrument that is still. For this the master has to be really a refined musician. A refined musician with a lot of riyas means self-practice. The strings of the other sitar can vibrate only if there is a delicate touch. In sitar, the string instrument, there are some major strings and right on top there are eight small strings that are known as parasympathetic strings. When the musician wants to introduce something with passion, he vibrates those strings. And this example of music happened during the times of an Indian Mughal emperor, Akbar. Akbar was very fond of music, art, and music and fine arts. He had nine jewels in his court room. Nine jewels in his court. They had their small they had their unique significance. One of the master musician was Tansin. He was a master musician. Akbar has heard about the synchronicity, so he inquired from the master musician Tansin. Tansin said, Though I am a great musician recognized, yet still this is beyond me. Because I work for you, I work for money, name, and fee. However, my master Haridas can do it. He is a master musician. He plays the music for his own entertainment. He is not playing the music to please others. We do everything in our lives to please others. We dress to please others. We do art, painting, whatever we do, cooking, this and that, all is done to please us. And in that we go on neglecting our, ourselves. So he said Haridas is a master musician. He plays when he feels like playing. You cannot force anything onto him. No money can buy his art. So Akbar said, send him an invitation to come to the court. He said, he is a master musician, he will not come to the court. He is not under the dominance of any one. He is a person of his own. No one can force him to do anything. He does it when he wants. When there is an inner call, he does it so. He is master musician, so he will not come to your court even if you offer him the entire wealth that you have. He lives in a nearby hut just on the other side of your palace. He is really his own master, not only that of the music alone. This is the reason 
that I have never mentioned often to you. I sing, I play the music because I am full of desires and expectations. Haridas will not come to your court, he will not follow your commands. Only beggars like me will come to your court. In the eyes of the world, he is a beggar. But the emperor was interested in listening to the master. It was arranged for emperor to visit the master Haridas. Tansin asked him to carry a stringed instrument sitar. Together they reached the master at three in the morning. He said that is the time when the master plays the music. Three o'clock in the morning they reached outside the hut of the master. It was exactly at that time the master used to play his instrument. Tansin asked the emperor to hide outside the hut. It was exactly at that time Master Haridas started playing his musical instrument. The emperor was surprised to observe that the tuned instrument that he was carrying began to vibrate the same tune that he was hearing being played from the instrument of the master. It was as if his silent instruments was replying to the tune played by the master. Also it appeared as if the invisible hands of the master were playing the two instruments simultaneously. Akbar began to cry. Tears trickled down his eyes out of joy. That something like this can happen? Nobody is touching this musical instrument. Someone else, a master musician, playing a similar instrument. And this instrument begins to vibrate at the same tune. This is synchronicity. Your heart, your kal, is that musical instrument. And everyone has the similar. And the process of tuning that instrument is called the process of austerity through meditation, through other practices. One can tune in his heart, his kal, his sacred heart to vibrate with the beat at the same wavelength when master goes into his intense views, intense meditation or sadhana, it happens. It was as if the silent instrument was replying to the tune played by the master. Also it appeared as if some invisible hands were playing the two instruments simultaneously. Otherwise, how could that be possible? Akbar began to cry and tears trickled down his eyes out of joy. If steadily they slipped in from the place where they were hiding and went back to the palace. Both of them remained silent throughout the whole day. Something like this happens between a master and a disciple who is on the borderline. Borderline means his sleep is disappearing and awaking is not yet complete. It is the time when the night is disappearing, the dawn is there, your eyes are half open, half closed. You are on the borderline. A similar situation happens when you are going to sleep. You lay your head onto the pillow. You are waking. The sleep has not yet grabbed you into its fold. 
It is a similar situation when anesthesia is given to a patient who is waking. As the anesthesia begins to work, he is falling into a state of controlled unconsciousness. He can count up to three very easily, but fourth he cannot complete. In a dragged voice, he says, not completes the number four. He is moving from one realm to another. This is known as borderline. Two of such moments comes every day. When in the night when you are going to sleep, you are awake. You lay your head onto the pillow. The sleep is coming, but it has not come completely. There is a moment, precise moment, when you are crossing the border. This is known as threshold. When you are entering a building, a room, now we do not make the threshold that is used to be long time a little like a hump at the door. You are at that threshold, neither you are outside nor inside. The threshold, that is space, which is the width of the, the depth of the door, is a no war, no war zone, whether where there is neither the rules of inside nor that of outside works, and in fact both works. This is known as threshold. When you are entering into space, you are traveling right through within the gravitational force of the earth. You are trying to reach to the very end of the gravitational force of Earth and you are entering, want to enter into another space which may be of Mars, which may be of Moon or any other planet. Tremendous force is needed to offset the gravitational force of Earth because you are coming from the Earth. And gravitational force of Earth has to be nullified for the other gravitational force to pull you. So tremendous force is generated in that device that takes you into the outer space. So you are reaching to the threshold where the gravitational force of Earth leaving its effects and you are all and you are trying to enter. There is a precise moment comes when the two neutralize one another, when the effect of the other begins to increase, and you fall into a sleep. One, two, three, four, and you are into the other realm. This is known as borderline. Something like this happens between a master and a disciple who is on the borderline. These two precise moments are considered the moments of moments very suitable for prayers. These are known as Nana calls it as Amrit Bela. Amrit means nectar. Bela means the moment of nectar, when nectar oozes into you. It is known as Sandhya Kal. Sandhya means evening, dusk. When it is, the day is ending and night is falling. It is neither day nor night. The threshold, the borderline. That is the time when Hindus do their prayers in the morning when 
the one quarter of the light is disappearing, dissolving into the dawn, is also a suitable moment for prayer. In meditation, these are simply symbolic. When one realm is releasing its effects and you are entering into the other, that is known as borderline. You are you have been asleep all through the life. Now traces of awakening are coming into you. And that is the time you are tuning to the Master. And then synchronicity happens between you and the Master. At that time, Master fills you. There is nothing invisibly happens between you and the master, but a great something great happens which you which is beyond the comprehension, beyond any explanation. This is known as Gaivana Tavajjo. Gaivana means the Tavajjo means attention. A literal English meaning is attention. My attention is towards you. You are sitting down in your place. I suddenly think of you and immediately you feel within that somebody is remembering you. The more clear your instrument is, you will immediately feel where the call is coming from. It happened in my last trip last trip to United States. I was in either Florida or South Carolina. One of our friends, a lady who has a great love for me, she was in Orlando. She had been thinking all the time that she wanted to talk to me. The family carried her during Christmas season for outing. So they went to a shopping mall. She remained sitting down on the bench outside and all of them went inside. She, there was an intense desire that she would to talk to me. I pick up my phone and called her the number that I had. But that phone was available with her son-in-law. And when she, he received the call, he said, the person, mother-in-law, is in the shopping mall. I will give her your number and ask her to call you. And because I did not have her number, so she called me. This is synchronicity. This happens sometimes, but this can happen continuously between master and disciple. Recently, some of you visited along with Sheikh Hisham Kabali to the shrine of Hazrat Nizamuddin Auliya in New Delhi. A great Chishtiyas Sheikh. In Sufism, there are four systems Nakshbandi, Chishtiya, Sohravardi, and Kadiriya. The ways, the systems. So he belonged to Chishtiya order. He had a disciple called Amir Husram. There was a tremendous synchronicity. Amir Khusro was a trader. He used to carry his caravan from place to place. And that was the time when they would carry their trading objects, trading things, onto the horses or any other some kind of animals on their back. 
and the retinue will go from place to place in search of the trading markets. And here, Hazrat Nizamuddin Aulia was his last time has come and he was ready to enter the other realm which we call death. He said one thing, do not mention of this to Amir Khusro. And Amir Khusro was the one who is known as the master of Indian music. It was he who developed the percussion musical instruments known as tabla. It was a it came from the original instrument known as pakhavaj, which was one. It was divided into two, the two sides of the Indian percussion instrument tabla came that accompanies any musical instrument or musical concert. Amir Khusro was passing through a forest. All of a sudden, he felt that his master is no more. He returned from there same time. Returned and when he reached, then his master, Hazrat Nizamuddin Aliya, had passed away. They did not want to tell him anything. There was a newly finished time. He felt that from here the smell of his master is coming. Sometimes it happens if you know a master musician or a master chef or something, a person who is expert in his field and you see his creation, you know it immediately, it is done by that person. So Amir Khusro felt the smell of his master coming from that shrine. He circumambulated along around the shrine and read a couplet. Gori sove sage par mukpal dare case Chal Khusro Bhara Apne Ren Bhai Chantesh Gori means a beautiful lady, woman. Sobe means sleeps on her bed. Gori Sobe Sage Par The beautiful woman dressed in all her splendor is sleeping on the bed. Chal Khusro there is a system in the poetry that we, the poet places his name. Chal Khusro Ghar Aapne. Khusro, it is time for you to return to your home. Chal Khusro Ghar Aapne. Khusro, it is time for you to return home. Ran bhai chaudis. All around there is darkness has spread. The day, the light has disappeared. The light that Hazrat Nizamuddin Aulia was is no more. That light that has incandescent lighted the unlit lamp of me is no more. There is no need to live anymore. And the same time saying this completed the circumvallation and he entered into death, consciously and willingly. After that, one of the disciples saw a dream where the Master is saying, Whosoever wants to attain to my place, he first pay respect to Amir Khusro, first visit the shrine of Amir Khusro, only then he can receive the benedictions, the grace from me. First, and there is a tradition, those who know, otherwise the people there, they will inform you that you have to visit Amir Khusro shrine first and then that of Hazrat Nizamuddin Omnia. This is synchronicity. The disciple has felt miles away 
that something has happened to my master. Something of this we see in modern day technology, the remote control device. By using the remote control, you change the channels on television. Internet is that kind of device. Through nispat, meditation, and inner sojourn, indomitable energy, field of harmony, bliss, and oneness is created within the master. He preserves this indomitable reservoir of energy within his being as the pulse of the cosmos. The same energy field that master transfers to the disciple through tavachu or silent communion. Sometimes he uses the words, his meditation sessions, arrangement of words, the choice of the words, the gaps between the two words. All this create the tavachu. Sometimes from his reservoir overflows silent communion. And other times the silence, harmony and inner beauty assumes the form of words. This is known as synchronicity. This is the way that the master establishes his communion, a communion with the disciple. Nothing is said, but everything happens. But we are so much verbalized that if something is silently communed to you, we are not able to decipher. Let us learn how the smart TV and the smart phone can be synced into one another. We know we try to sync our all the instruments together, but we forget in that process that the inner instruments can also be tuned through meditation, inner sojourn, through tremendous love in you for your master or for the person, you can establish this synchronicity. And once this happens, no outward method of communion is necessary. And love is that silent communion that speaks through silent gestures. And when it speaks through silent gestures, what it does? It pronounces aesthetic beauties. And that is the way of transformation. That is the way of being in the company of the Master. This is known as synchronicity.